If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already. And with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again and welcome to episode number 104 of the Career Mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. We really need to pick up some points in today's episode if we possibly can because our league form has really stuttered of late. As you can see, we are 10th still, but we're a full 8 points behind Stoke City with only 3 games to go. So if we want to finish any higher than where we are right now, we need to start picking up points and sharpish. With uh, only 9 left available and the fact that we're 8 points behind them, it's going to be a tough ask, but we'll start trying to get three points here against Burnley at home although obviously they're fighting for survival down at the bottom of the table so they'll be just as desperate for three points as I am because of course they want to stay up and we want to finish as high as possible so that we get as much prize money as possible so that we can bring in as many good players as possible to help improve the squad to not have this problem next year to try and finish well inside the top half and maybe even challenge for a Europa League spot but we don't get off to the best of starts Sam Vokes toe pokes the initial ball in home and we're 1-0 down after 14 minutes not the way I'd envisage the start of this game going to be completely honest but then Nicholas Spaller steals it off Michael Kiteley gets it into George who finds Fabian Cassidy he's not been scoring goals recently but he does get himself on a score seat here really nice finesse shot into the bottom corner really well timed run as well to stay on side as George Ev played him through and he, he and George Ev were going to be involved again here as you can see Cassidy really doing nicely to turn inside good shot Heaton tries to get something on it to get it around the post he does get quite a significant amount of contact on on the ball but he can only divert it in off the inside the far post and from 1-0 down we find ourselves going 2-1 up but we're into the uh, almost the very end of the second half here when Burnley are going to stand the ball up into the box we are going to initially get the ball clear but only because it's actually the Burnley man that wins the header my defender goes down and stays down that kind of put me off then when I was trying to uh, change player to recover the ball unfortunately by the time I figured out which player I wanted to be in control of to try and get it back off Nathaniel Chaloba he'd already scored so uh, we're back at 2-2 but a brilliant ball through to Georgiev here and we're through one-on-one -on -one in the last minute and a really good right-footed finish from Georgiev. He's left-footed actually and uh, I ordinarily would have gone across goal with his left foot but he's not been scoring many goals on his left whatsoever. I've tried a couple of times in recent games to try and place a shot with his left foot and it's not worked. He scored a goal against Stoke in the last episode with his right foot so I went to go with his right there and it appears his weak foot right now is the favoured foot because uh, they seem to be going into the back of the net but fortunately he and Cassida are back on form now for us at least in this game to give us a 3-2 victory against Burnley which won't help their promotion uh, their uh, relegation fight at all but it does help us close in on the teams above us and consolidate in 10th place but unfortunately Mehdi Zafane has uh, torn his ACL so he's going to be out for seven months so he's not only going to miss the end of this season, he's probably going to miss all the way up until January next season as well, which is a real, real shame. So uh, that's definitely going to be a position we're going to have to look to improve in during the summer. And uh, maybe I'll even look to bring in Hector Bayerin back on loan. But we, after playing Burnley, who are down the bottom, we now play Watford, who are even further down the bottom. They are rock bottom and probably already relegated, judging by the fact they're only on like 22 points. So uh, we obviously still need to get maximum points if we want to do anything with our position in the league although I can't quite remember whether uh, we may actually be out of touch with 10th already by this point but Watford or oh, out of touch with 9th and staying in 10th that is or maximum of 10th we may even be caught by the teams behind by the time we get to the last game of the season but uh, Watford starting with uh, Igalo and Troy Deeney up top as you might expect obviously you've got Anya and Igalo either side of Troy Deeney and it was actually Igalo that's going to have the first chance of the game really decent effort actually if it had kept that down a little bit more then uh, they may have found themselves going 1-0 up early on but I was struggling to get the ball away here as you can see not the best of passes out and then Igalo's going to have the second effort hits the outside of the post and it goes away again though Spoiler's clearance isn't the best it's going to be picked off in the midfield by uh, the Watford man Igalo gets a bit lucky with the way it rebounds about but then it's Anya that has the shot and this time it flashes past the post so a little bit of a let off there so far for us in the opening half an hour or so but then it was time for us to start having a go at the other end Ryan Donald into Cassida over the top to Gabby Adini who's the returning centre mid from injury decent shot but unfortunately Brad Guzan gets something behind it and then is able to pick off the rebound before Gabby Adini can jump up to head in the uh, the knockback but we get a nice tackle in there from Donaldson brilliant turn from Cassida and I would have put my money on him scoring from there but that is just the form he's in right now unfortunately after getting a couple of good goals against Burnley 
Really, seemingly, it was a one-off, and he wasn't able to uh, to capitalise on the opportunity there. A clear-cut one-on-one, just put it in the bottom corner, and he missed it. And then uh, the ball is just pinging about here in the box, and they do eventually get it clear after a decent effort, actually, from Georgiev on his left-hand side. But it was a good save by Brad Guzan. And then they're going to smash the bar here. That is really unlucky. They've actually not been uh, very lucky at all in this game, actually, Watford. They've done very, very well against us, but no goal for them so far, and no goal for us so far. But can Kevin Schmidt draw a good save up? the goalkeeper he can and it doesn't rebound back to us so unfortunately only a nil nil draw with Watford here after uh, a win against Burnley that means we can't finish any higher than 10th now in the league but we'll have a look at the league table at the end of the episode to see if anything else can happen with the teams below us but if you want to pause the video at any particular point to have a closer look at uh, people's stats as we go through this squad report then feel free to do so we actually have a half decent squad there have been a few people in the comments saying you know my squad isn't anywhere near good enough to be where we are in the Premier League but to be fair there aren't there aren't many sides in the lower half of the table that have you know a lot of people that are kind of 75 and above rated so uh, I'm actually quite pleased with where we are right now there are a lot of silver players in my side if you were kind, kind of to compare it to ultimate team and uh, there are a lot of silver players in the side that in the sides that are in kind of the uh, the lower half of the Barclays Premier League so I'm quite pleased with our how we've done so far this season. I don't think we've overachieved too much and I don't think it's quite as clear cut as some people are saying, you know, it's far too easy for me because I am having to work for my position here this season and uh, we, after the great start we had to the year, I really was struggling as we headed into the second half of the season with fatigue and with generally just not playing very good football once we uh, kind of got over the emotional uh, high of getting promoted into the BPL. So uh, I'm quite happy with the way things are right now. I'm not going to be stepping up the difficulty just yet. Uh, we'll see how things go at the start of the second season, although again, it may be a case of the fact that we have a decent start and then trail off towards the end of the year. But, you know, we've done that in every single season so far, so I'm not really too fussed with the way things are going at the minute. The the, uh, the series is going well. It's getting a little bit more popular as well now that we're in the BPL, which is good. I'm pleased with that. And uh, hopefully, as you can see, we can uh, get a decent amount of money for 10th uh, place in the league because we won't be finishing anywhere else. We are five points behind Southampton 9th and four points ahead of Derby in 11th. So we are definitely finishing 10th in the BPL in our first year, which is a very respectable position. Slap bang mid-table. Couldn't have asked for a more average season, to be completely honest. 13 wins, 13 defeats and 11 draws. And almost an exact goal difference as well. 38 goals scored, 34 goals conceded. So we haven't scored that many goals at all. An average of one a game, which really isn't that good, to be completely honest. So uh, to finish 10th in the table, we actually haven't scored more goals than anyone apart from... Uh, Aston Villa and Burnley down there towards the bottom so to have only conceded 34 is the main reason why we are where we are otherwise we would have really finished uh, a lot lower but uh, we managed to have a solid defence but our attack really needs improving for the second for the second season in the BPL for season five of the series so we'll try and do that as we head into uh, the transfer window in the next episode. Actually, no, it won't be the next episode. The next episode will be the last game of the season, which I think is against Manchester City. I'm not entirely too sure, but uh, we'll, be, we'll play the last game of the season in the next episode and have kind of a mini season roundup. And then on Friday, we'll uh, have a look at some transfer targets for season five. And uh, we'll see how we get on there. But for now, for Monday night, that's going to bring today's episode to a close. Thank you very much for watching. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. It really helps my channel out when you do so. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on any further episodes. And we'll be streaming Football Manager again later on tonight. Of course, it is uh, Monday evening. So uh, that will be happening over on twitch.tv forward slash Chesnoy Gaming. There'll be a link in the description to that if you want to watch. And obviously links to my uh, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook if you want to uh, follow me on any social media platforms as well. As well as obviously the uh, link to g2a.com as well if you want yourself any xbox playstation codes or pc games but that is all for now thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time